Dungeons and Daddies is a rowdy, horny, violent podcast for grown-ups. Content warnings can be found in the description. Welcome to Neverwinter City, where the grass is green and the dads are pretty. Pretty much up a creek, that is. No one ever accused Henry Oak and Ron Stampler of having an overabundance of common sense, but this latest plot to sneak into town and hire a band of mercenaries? <laughs> had more leaps of logic than a J.J. Abrams movie. And sure enough, the second they got to the city gates, the whole harebrained caper went to hell in a handbasket. That's what happens when you let orphan fighter Hayden Bennett do the talking. Now these dad boys are stuck tighter than a hair in a biscuit, with the Blue Coat Brigade fixing to tame their hides. But what's that? Why, it's Odyssey Son herself, with Daryl Wilson at the wheel and Glenn Close riding shotgun. Whatever these two got cooking, bound to make old Sheriff Boreanaz madder than a wet hand. Soup's on, boys! Welcome to Dungeons and Daddies, occasionally a BDSM podcast, occasionally a Dungeons and Dragons podcast where we loosely play 5e. In case you were wondering, most people are. I just, I just started saw, us off with a bang here, Freddie. Yeah. I just I saw a thread. What's going like, on, man? People were like, "What? What edition of D and D they play?" And the response was like, "Not edition D and D." You know what? I want a hundred people standing over their table when they're playing Dungeons and Dragons. Yeah. See, <laughs> see if they miss any rules. Every <laughs> time my mom calls, she's like, "Sweetheart, what edition are you playing?" <laughs> Bethany, I love you, but you only get one reaction per turn. <laughs> <laughs> this is a D&D podcast about four dads from our world flung into the Forgotten Realms in the quest to rescue their lost sons. My name is Freddie Wong. I play Glenn Close, the rock and roll bard of the group. Fun dad fact for Glenn this week. <clears throat> Glenn just took a DNA test. Turns out they give that shit to the FBI. <laughs> <laughs> Glenn does not. Well done. Uh, it's jacked up. Did you know? So I took 23 and I found this one out the hard way. What does that mean? Ooh. Uh, <laughs> Did you Googled it? <laughs> <laughs> I binged it. Like um, Reddit slash TIL. Today I learned that my uh, DNA yeah, went to the If you took 23 and me, the cops have your DNA. So now oh, the I, cops already have our DNA. Yeah. No, no, but I'm saying, no, 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 no. I'm saying like that information is shared. Those databases are now shared with the national databases. So I can't even do crimes anymore. I can't like, however, come on, wait, stop. stay like each state has a different sort of policy on whether or not they can use that national DNA bank to get pregnant. We need to talk. What? <laughs> <laughs> um, Freddie, you think they're making babies with you? No, with I think DNA? they're just making it really difficult. Dark, oh, sorry, does Glenn, does YouTube Glenn Laboratories that? is cloning the ultimate influencer. <laughs> Glenn secretly believes that his DNA hidden, encoded in his DNA is the secret to true rock and roll stardom, which he possesses. And he's like, I can't let anyone get into some of this special juice. It's like when Jet Li wouldn't let them mocap him for Matrix because he's like, they're going to copy my ultimate martial arts moves. Oh, yeah, he was like and on like, top of deep fakes. Yeah. Dude, he was ahead of that No, game. I mean, it's, it's to be fair, it's totally true. Like, if I could have seen his uh, moves, I could have definitely just replicated. <laughs> 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 what are you thinking, buddy? <laughs> um, I'm going to go first. Oh, whoa. whoa. Yeah. All right, I, power move. I'm in a good mood. Every step back. I'm in a good mood. It's Best been a few front. months, but um, <laughs> uh, hey, I'm Beth May, <laughs> and I play Ron. The future is female. <laughs> Sorry. I literally, I literally interrupted you to say interrupting that. Interrupting a woman to say the future is female. I love it. I'm sorry. <laughs> Whenever somebody interrupts me to say that the future is female, I'm like, no, you go ahead. Tell me. <laughs> hey, I'm Beth May, and I play Ron Stampler, a man. <laughs> and also an, <laughs> an emotionally detached stepfather and a rogue. Sort of. Everybody's like, what? He's not a rogue. You're not playing the fake game correctly, Bethany. Me? Oh, yeah. We are so salty tonight. Um, okay, so <laughs> fun dad fact about Ron. Ron has attached earlobes. Um, oh, okay. okay. This is, okay, so like. Fun Everybody's fan art now has to change. Yeah, it, like canonically, <laughs> Ron has. <laughs> Hugh and Cat are like. Fuck! Attached, <laughs> attached earlobes. So like you either have detached or attached mm -hmm. earlobes and it sounds really dramatic and horrible, but it's literally just like, Anthony, I can tell that you have. He's attached. Yeah, he's attached. Yeah, mine are attached. 
<laughs> I can tell that you're all circumcised. No. <laughs> Anthony's earlobes are fully um, intact. <laughs> <laughs> okay, but like I, um, I overheard this couple clearly on their first date at Tanner's Coffee Shop, and the guy was like, "Oh, you have detached earlobes," <laughs> oh, <laughs> and she like game. she didn't get it, and so he was like mansplaining earlobe attachedness. I mean, but, if um, she didn't get it, and he explained it. Is that really? I mean, careful, Matt. <laughs> asking, no, like she was. Do you want to explain like, what mansplaining is to Beth? <laughs> was that? <laughs> no, I'm she was. Back the she was just literally like, I don't understand. Maybe she just didn't understand why he was bringing it up on a date. Anyway, um, canonically, That's yes, some serial killer shit to bring up on yeah. a date. Yeah. <laughs> no, I've looked yeah, very was. closely at your ears, and I was yeah. just like getting a smoothie or something, and I just hear like. Yeah, so uh, your earlobes are detached. And she's like, what, what do you mean? What do you mean? It means we're not going <laughs> it out It means again. like everybody, like, see, look. Look at you. And she's like, I can't see my earlobes. <laughs> <laughs> well, why don't you go just to change up the All order? All right, let's mix it up. I play Henry Oak, hippie, druid, rockin', Birkenstock, rockin', crunchy, munchy, hippie nature druid dad. Got that a little wrong. Okay, we're going to power through it. I'm a little nervous today because I, for Henry's dad fact, I'm going to reveal... Who he was going to say was the I favorite. I knew you were going to do it once he said it was heavy. Oh, my gosh. So the reason he could not bring himself to say it is because this is one of Henry's greatest shames, is that his favorite child is Beanie, his original parrot. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Henry had a... He, before he oh before they had the kids, parrots live a long time. Before they had the kids, before... <laughs> my ex-boyfriend has a parrot that is his older brother. Like a macaw. This is a, no, it's no. serious <laughs> shit. Yeah. <laughs> So that's not a way. Say that sentence again. My, <laughs> Half of my brain cells just committed suicide out of my, self-preservation. Okay, so my ex-boyfriend, I said my ex-boyfriend has a, a parrot that is his older brother. You did say those and words that's why, order. Said. And that's why I dumped him for his older brother. <laughs> that parrot, parrot fucks like there's no tomorrow. <laughs> no, but like, okay, so my my ex is like 30-something, I'll just say that. And then um, lower ends of 30s. And um, the parrot of his family... Um, I forget his name, but the parrot is 36. Jesus. Like older. Parrots can live to 50 years. I just Googled. I did not know that. Yeah. yeah. So Henry, when he was on his own in his 20s, he went through a really rough time and he bonded with his parrot. It was a wild parrot. Mm -hmm. uh, like one of those ones that like, you know, you'll, you'll be like, why the fuck are there parrots in this part of town? Like in New York or in San Francisco, they have them. He bonded with this injured parrot, nursed it back to health. They were inseparable for years and years. He got married. They had kids. And one day, Which? wait, wait, what? <laughs> Him and the parrot? <laughs> I thought this was going to be like a for no. sale baby shoes no, never sorry, worn. Sorry. Everyone's giving me in tears, and then my I'm ruining it. <laughs> uh, no, when he got married to his Mercedes O Garcia, like but he always it was like his buddy Beanie, mm -hmm. it was like his best friend. You know, got him through thick and thin. And when Larkin Sparrow were seven, they were roughhousing in the house Holy like shit. usual, oh, man. not oh, paying God. attention. Oh my God, And they no. knocked into <gasps> Beanie's cage, and Beanie got crushed. What? Oh, and wow. died. And Henry was furious, but has vowed to never get angry at his kids. Wow. And he was heartbroken and ashamed of himself, both as a father for not having better control of his kids and ashamed of, a, you know, devastated about the loss of his best friend. He's really bitten down on those emotions, but he like Beanie has always had this special place in his heart. And he's horrified by that. He feels so guilty and awful about it, but it's like kind of deep down. He still knows that it's true and he doesn't really feel like he can talk to anybody about it. For so sale like, crackers, dead bird. <laughs> <laughs> so that's, uh, so that was what Damn. he was trying not to say uh, in that wow. scene. Well, if it makes Henry feel better as the only uh, parent here, I can tell you it's not weird to love animals more than your kid. <laughs> <laughs> I did. Don't I was, worry, not that weird. I did notice <laughs> that you still have Play-Doh as your Instagram photo and not oh, your adorable wow. baby daughter. Well, that's because Matt's already reserved all the sick, awesome, <laughs> like, OG handles for his daughter already. He's not going to... Anyway. Yeah. No, I'll keep uh, my daughter private from the <laughs> internet. Fair enough. <laughs> Don't keep your cat private? <laughs> no. My, yeah. Um, <laughs> all right. Uh, hi. My name's Matt Arnold. I play Daryl Wilson, a, a stay-at-home coach dad who's a barbarian. I don't know quite when this episode's coming out, but I figured I would say that every year, every new year, Daryl makes his whole family do New Year's resolutions at the breakfast uh, table, and he always picks the same resolution, which is he's going to surprise them every morning. 
and that's it. And he tries to, and they fucking hate it every time. But that's surprise. Yeah, yeah. He surprises them every morning. Wait, like, what's a surprise? Like, how? So I have follow up <laughs> questions. What's like a typical Daryl surprise? And then how long into the year does he get before it peters out? He peters out very, very quickly because he, they get mad at him. And usually the surprise is he'll wake up Grant like in the morning, like, surprise. Um, I didn't think uh. that far ahead. <laughs> <laughs> what, what the surprises were. Don't but worry does he understand how hard it is to do a mystery box type show? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe next week you'll find out what the surprises are, Will. <laughs> Fair enough. Anyways, we have one real dad here, which is Anthony. Hello, dad. Hi, it's me, Anthony, your dad. Hi, dad. Hi, dad. Um, Hi, dad. My dad fact is I was looking, uh, I, I saw a tweet that said, uh, if you're a speaker and you're one of those people who says like, good morning, oh, come on, we could do better than that. Good morning. <laughs> I immediately hate you. And I realized all four dads in this show are different shades of that <laughs> person. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Glenn has definitely done that. I can't hear you yeah. at a Christmas benefit concert in a mall. Yeah. I feel like Daryl would definitely be like, good morning. <laughs> is that all you guys got? Come yeah, on, yeah. give it again. Good morning. Henry, say it so loud, the whole earth can hear you. <laughs> oh, and then Rob would be like, I don't know what to say next, so I will just repeat. Um, I, <laughs> or Ron, can like, you say didn't it again? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, what was that? Um, what? So last episode, you went off to try to reclaim the jewels that had been stolen from you by Scam Likely. You went to Scam Likely's riddle dungeon. So you have three jewels remaining. You successfully solved all of Scam Likely's riddles and either refused to do or successfully did all of his truths or dares. You then decided to send in Payton writing Henry, who is in bear form. Oh, God, this went tits up real bad. It was it? maybe the stupidest decision the we've ever we made as a group. Because we were riding high off the other thing. Like, yeah, we're going to just walk back in and get the stuff. And immediately, uh, so everybody to listen to Daryl. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> Shit. Yeah, all your persuasion rolls failed, and the blue coats of Neverwinter immediately noticed Ron. And then Payton tried to cover for it by saying he was bringing him in like Chewie in Star Wars. Like, I'm taking him to, to detention center, uh, whatever the fuck. And uh, Cell block AA23. Thank you. TK421, that's the one I was remembering. I almost said 420. I was like, that's not TK421. 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 Nice. Why aren't you at your post? I'll tell you why. Because <laughs> <laughs> you're getting blazed in your Stormtrooper outfit. TK420 is a very- Because I got a bong that looks like a lightsaber. <laughs> <laughs> Me and Yoda are smoking Kush on Dagobah. Oh, <laughs> uh, boy. That- I got so much weed in me. These looks like there's two suns on this planet. Um, Moss Heisley Casino. Katina. Moss Heisley. I like Casino better. Just ripping them in Cloud City, baby. <laughs> Every Star Wars location is weed slang. Um, oh, boy. So this, uh, uh, yeah, every Star Wars location is weed slang. <laughs> Freddy All right. just smoked weed. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, bro, you want to head out back? We get blazed so in a place upset. called the Sarlacc Pit. <laughs> Are we still summarizing what happened Yo, last Boba episode? It's been in there for so long, bro. <laughs> okay. Uh, okay. okay. So <laughs> who's going to edit the podcast now that Freddy's fired? <laughs> <laughs> So Ron and Henry and Payton have basically been attacked and like tackled by the blue coats of Neverwinter. And I'm presuming that the remainder of you were like watching this happen. If oh, I remember correctly, the two of you then yeah. did a Dukes of Hazard. Yeah, we're in jump. A freeze frame. Oh, right, right, right. Yeah, you yeah, freeze we ended frame on a freeze in. frame, yeah. I believe. Cool, cool, cool. Okay. Yeah, well, which in audio to- form is just silence. <laughs> <laughs> so you basically land right before this big mass of blue coats that are just on top of Payton and the bear and the Ron, uh, just basically <laughs> hitting them with truncheons and, and stuff like that. Like, if they failed so bad, I'd, we're not even... If we do want to do a proper like initiative combat shit, we can. But I, I'm basically treating them as one massive mob of angry, one Looney Tunes cartoon cloud of dust exactly. with feet and yeah, fists with, like, coming out of it. points coming out and like little like asterisks and shit. So are the blue coats like people we've met like when we they first the got cops there? Of okay, cool, cool, cool. You you saw them the last time you were here as okay. well. Boreanis is their leader. Oh wow, Daryl hit the high beams and like hit the windshield wipers and like blow the horn and we can bluff them. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I was gonna, I was gonna make it like a beast. Okay, so then I will indeed roll for a drift. I'm gonna try to spin 180 so the back wheels are pointing straight at everybody. Okay, so roll your your car skill that we sort of homebrewed in. Yeah, I have a well. We're gonna use my animal handling because it is a beast. It's a beast, right? 
That is an 18 plus 4 is my animal Ooh, handling. Wow, okay, so describe what happens. I land, and I feel like it's slick mud, like kind of wet, and I spin. In fact, I, I don't spin 180. I spin 540, so I do a full 360 and then spin one more 180 to go backwards. And then the moment I, I love, land. I love that you had enough like <laughs> discretion to be like, I can't do the 900. That's Tony Hawk's move. I'll do the 540. Okay, Bob Burnquist. <laughs> <laughs> Me and my boy Bucky Lasik here. And then, yes, the first time the headlights point at them, I flash the headlights and the high beam, and me and Glenn scream animal noises. Glenn, just you sound have a like, horn. You, you, you have, have a horn. horn. Just I horn. You have a button that makes your car scream. Ah! I, I hit the horn, and I scream, and then when I go backwards, I rev the engine, I start spraying dirt at them, and I open up the back, and I start screaming. It's like, this beast will consume you if you don't let go of my friends. And then, and then in the back, I'm holding the Honda Vac system, which allows you the vacuum in the back, and I have it on, so it's this like, snaky-looking tube going like... Okay. I can only handle this creature for so long. All right. So, Cops of Neverwinter, you got to chill. You've angered the beast, <laughs> lest you um, incur its wrath. You all got to chill. Okay, so one of the two of you roll intimidation with advantage because you drifted so good. I've got a question really quick. Yeah, what's up? What does the Honda Odyssey's like horn canonically sound? Like? I'm turning into Freddie and Anthony where I say canonically every other word. <laughs> I've tried to say it less. Okay. Freddie, you probably know better. It just sounds like a, sounds like a car horn. horn. I figured like Daryl had like beasted oh, it does out. does he have like, oh, <laughs> oh yeah, hold on. Wait, Daryl, has Daryl installed an aftermarket horn? Have the boys at Pet Boys hook Daryl up with a sick aftermarket horn? No. Also, does the minivan have truck nuts? <laughs> Absolutely not. <laughs> Daryl would hate truck nuts. Okay. Uh, my Prius has truck nuts. <laughs> okay, so that's going to be My with... other Prius is truck nuts. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know what sucks about the Cybertruck is how can you get truck nuts on that Are you kidding? The Cybertruck would make truck nuts look so fucking cool and oh, dope it God. wouldn't even be funny. The truck nuts would probably have like Cylon eyes on them. <laughs> the truck nuts are driving it. Oh! oh. Bazing. All right, I got 15. So with a 15, the horde of blue coats looks up and for a second stop pummeling your friends. They sort of pause a little bit freaked out and they're looking at each other like not quite sure what to do. And I go, oh, seriously, I can't control this thing. And I back up and start it again and then back up. I keep backing up towards them and then like revving the engine and pulling forward and back. And be like, seriously, if I let go of this thing, it's just going to it's just gonna come right at you guys. Okay. And, then, and then Glenn, for his part, is doing that thing with a vacuum cleaner when you like put your hand on it and like sucks your hand up. And you see He's like, whoa, whoa. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Oh, it's uh, like it's, it's while they're me. doing this, Henry is going to debear and try to commune with Ron and Peyton to try to slip away while everyone is distracted. Okay. Peyton, Ron, let's get out of here. Let's let's give him the slip and we can just you know, maybe sneak back to the van. Well, okay. What if we put the holographic pants on you as a bear? <laughs> That's what would that accomplish? What, what, what are we trying to do? You <laughs> lost instead, me. Instead of three people, we look like just a big pair of pants. But you would be, uh, wouldn't be wearing the pants. We would still look like three people. But one oh, of those no, wearing... I see what Ron's saying. It's like, I'll put it around my head like a headband, and then you guys jump onto my legs, and then I'll run out of here. <laughs> yeah. You know what? I can't argue with that. Yeah, no, that makes perfect why, sense. I, why, why would... I, I, Are you guys... Hey, guys, can you just run in here? <laughs> if you try to run in there, you're basically still flanked by all these dudes, and they'll all take opportunity attacks oh, on see, you. Okay, well, maybe we should just run in opposite directions. Maybe we should, like... I, I cast about to see if there's any, like, handy places we could duck into to hide. Oh, yeah, and Neverwinter's a really big town, so there's all kinds of alleys and, and you know, little shops and stuff that you can... Let's could... slip into that alley, and then we can double back and try to get back inside the van. Okay. So somebody roll stealth. Oh, okay. That feels like a Ron roll. Okay. Oh, wait. What if we do the pants thing and then we can all use step Ron stealth? And yeah. Then we, wait. We do the pants thing and then we go into one of the shops and we're like, oh, a big, a big pair, pair of, of pants, pants in the shop. Sale. Is there a big and tall shop nearby? Yes. <laughs> okay. Yes. <laughs> ye, ye big with an E. Yes. And T A L L E. Uh, and it's only for Goliaths and Giants and like... And they sell big dog shirts, too. They do. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay. All right. In that case, I'm still in bear form. I crawl onto you and I hand you the belt with the holographic paint. Yeah. Here's how I figured this is going is that Ron ties the belt around my head and then Ron is tugging on my fur like a reverse ratatouille to direct the stealthiness. You know, that's just a person riding an animal. That happens all the time. It's a reverse <laughs> every, ratatouille. Every single Western ever made is full of reverse ratatouilles. <laughs> <laughs> Will goes to the farm and is like, look at all these fucking reverse ratatouilles. 
I didn't know they had reverse ratatouilles in the Renaissance. <laughs> Strong Wayne was one of the best reverse ratatouille riders. <laughs> Probably my favorite reverse ratatouille movie, other than Ratatouille, is um, Sea Biscuit. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, okay, I'm rolling. I'm, uh, I'm, I'm I'm amazed Pixar let them get away with this. <laughs> I am I am rolling. I am going to the IMDb page for Seabiscuit and leaving a review, a one star review, just saying that this is just a reverse gratitude. <laughs> <laughs> guys, okay, guys, I am rolling reverse ratatouille right okay, now. Okay, go ahead, roll stealth, yeah. <laughs> I got a four, but plus eight <laughs> is uh, still not great. A 12, yeah. 12 yeah. is not going to do it. So basically, they don't see the reverse right to it. They just see a massive pair of pants try to sneak away like stealthily <laughs> from the mass of like 30 cops. And they all just go, oh my God, they turned into one big pair of pants. Get them. And they just start chasing you. <laughs> so we're all running as one big pair of pants down the street yeah. now? Yeah. Yeah. So as far as I can tell. Not, yes. not towards us? Away from us? Yes, away from you. Why are you guys running away from us? I mean, I, well, I, I, well, where are you is, running? Yeah. The crowd of goons is between yeah, yeah. us and you. So is you. there anyone oh. left with us? <laughs> what? So is there anybody watching us? Does Glenn just sit here just diddling around with a vacuum cleaner and then everyone leaves? Uh, I, I feel, feel like, like you guys should chase after us yeah, and I we start... can try to pilot the pants back around to you. Yeah, I, th I think that you scared those guys so much that you made them want to get away from you anyway. And now that they see there's a large pair of pants to go chase, they're like, sure, yeah, I can chase after these guys and pretend that it's for that and not because I'm scared of the big beast. Any port in a storm. Should we break up? I mean, not like emotionally or relationship wise, I think we but should like see should, other dads. It, should we like become other um, things other than this big pair of pants? Like, hey, Peyton, you could go that way, and I could go. Um, I don't want to split way. up. This is a big city. I'd be scared to split up. Well, if you guys like stay here, and then I can go get away. Would be. <laughs> <laughs> I look at Glenn. I'm like, Glenn, you've seen Fast and Furious Seven, right? Oh yeah. Oh are yeah. You yeah. You, you've seen 2012. Oh yeah, disaster. You see every Emmerich's movie with a cargo shit, plane, dude. right? Every movie with a cargo plane. Well, you understand you know, what I'm, I'm saying? You understand how this that. is going to work? I peel out and I start driving towards them. <laughs> oh god! Are okay. you are you driving backwards because you got the trunk open? No, I'm going to get in front of you guys like a cargo plane, and you guys will just uh, climb up inside. Okay, this car's faster than you, so I'm going to get in oh front my of gosh. you. Okay, so if we position the belt of the holographic pants in a perfect position to be clipped by the mirror of the Honda <laughs> Odyssey, um, we'll be thrust into the trunk of the van. Um, <laughs> what does the yeah. pants have to do with the van, though? Well, okay, so when Daryl was, like, quietly on the other side of this place where we cannot hear talking about movies with big cargo planes, <laughs> I, Ron, was thinking about one of the Batman movies where they talk about, like, flying and being caught in midair. And um, that was called Skyhook in one of the Batman movies. But if it's Belt Loop... Never mind. I think we should go. <laughs> In terms of timeline, I think like as Ron was trying to explain that, uh, Daryl is just driving full speed in reverse at them. Okay. Okay. So the plan. So <laughs> okay. <laughs> as all right. So then, as Ron's talking and Daryl's doing that, Henry's going to look back and see the maw of the van approaching them. Okay. So the van is approaching you with its trunk open, and six or so of the blue coats like turn back and they see the beast coming out with his big open maw, and, ah, and they try to scatter, and a couple of them don't, and sort of like Ugh. end up sort of jumping directly into the van with uh -oh. you. Uh oh. <laughs> <laughs> they're just in the van with you, and they're like, ah, ah, and they start to freak out, but then they sort of realize like, oh, nothing's. Nothing's happening. Like, this is fine. You're just saying there's guys in the van with us? Yeah, there are now blue coats in the How van many? with you. How many? Uh, six. Six in the van. van. Okay, all right. Okay, let's. Yeah, we can walk it's, out. It's a, it's we can a, walk out to our Odyssey right now. You're not going to get <laughs> a six. It's a stuffed phone adults. booth kind of thing. I think they get this because they're all probably like laying on the floor. And yeah, stuff. they're not like like fighting fit. Yeah, they're yeah, just okay. like all they're all like smushed together and on the floor and confused and only are just now realizing like oh we're not getting digested. I put the vacuum cleaner on their skin like <laughs> <laughs> okay, that one. That guy's freaking out. <laughs> <laughs> that, that guy's losing his shit. He's like, ah, ah. <laughs> All right, Henry's going to yell, hang on, guys, and jump into the van. Okay, cool. Roll uh, acrobatics. Do I roll a bear's acrobatics? Yeah. Or <laughs> I think you get different stats as a bear, so yeah. Okay, I don't know what those stats are. Uh, You're going to Winnie the Pooh this van. To be fair, bears can ride on little tricycles. <laughs> but if you're going to jump into the back of the van, you're going to, that's good. You'll smush the whole okay, van. Okay, go ahead and roll. I'm looking at his stats right now. I'll tell you if it works or not. I got a 17. Okay, 17 will do it. 
All right, so you leap on top of this mass of dudes that are inside the van. So it's a fucking full house in this van. Like, it's just, it's packed wall to wall with people. These guys have all seen Batman. (laughs) <laughs> so they're basically freaking out and you're on top of them and so they just start taking out their like swords and they just start trying to stab at yeah, you except they, with yeah them. but like they certainly couldn't right oh yeah yeah that's fair so I they're just like hitting you with, I feel like you're airtight yeah there. no they're they're just trying to hit you with their fucking hands trying and it's doing me? yeah I mean they, they are hitting you but it's doing almost nothing because there's no leverage for them to get like a good blow at you but okay. like so you hear one of the blue coats say like in the, in the, in the name of Sheriff Boreanaz like, you are under arrest by the blue coats of Neverwinter you must report to the blue coat headquarters at once. Uh, I don't think so, buddy. And wait, I, wait, wait. but we got us. We're still here for mercenaries, right? Like, why don't <laughs> God, we're still I spin? As just, I spin one eighty and I start driving out of the town. Does anybody want to stop him? I, I okay. I can't talk because I'm a bear. <laughs> you can de transform whenever you want to. Okay. I guess. Uh, well, but I'm kind of sitting on top of the six guys. True. So yeah. I yeah. If you, like if, you if you do that, then they'll be able to like. Start I guess I just you. talked with Ron, but we're gonna just say that like that's like a Ron thing. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like it's a Ron thing. You wouldn't understand. I just feel like we should get out of this situation <laughs> right now. <laughs> Henry's making bear noises from the back. He thinks this is a bad idea. Just paw him out, man. Shove these losers out, dude. Uh, Daryl, can you open a window? I'm not saying that anybody tooted or anything but um there's a all right everybody calm down i'm driving out of here we'll talk about this when we're done i'm not saying it was your fault but you guys all walked in there and now i'm gonna bring us out of the situation we can figure out what to do so, so the blue, the blue coat that was my yelling arm at- rest <laughs> so the blue coat that was yelling at you is like you, you, you guys are asshole you you came to our town and you killed like 200 people with your fucking pyramid and you just let you guys are dicks you guys are the worst you should go back in and face justice you suck Young man you watch your language in this car i'm a grown man yeah you're not sounding like one like right now are you henry d bears okay uh so if, if you d bear then immediately like two of them you were keeping in just by friction so they just sort of fall out the back and tumble down out of the van so now there are four blue coats left and they immediately draw these little daggers and they Everybody- point them at your throat should, we should just call for us to hang on and buckle our seatbelts yeah. and then whip a 180 and just fling yeah, them but out. But now Peyton and, and Ron are in the back. Peyton's not got a seatbelt, and now freaking Henry just de Barrett's, and now those guys with They're daggers. Right. We need to atone for what we've done to this town. Oh, my God. I just keep driving. I'm like, Henry, you know, that would have been a good thing to say. Like, uh, I just want to know if anybody dies right now. It's on you, buddy. Uh, good job debaring, dude. Can hey, Peyton. Peyton. Get up front. Hey, Peyton. Get up Peyton. front, Peyton. Peyton's like, I, I, can't, I, I can't move. There's this guy in my foot. And he's got a knife to Henry. And I'm worried. Can we turn on the radio? Uh, uh, no, Ron, uh, can you help Peyton out? Uh, yeah, sir. Where, Peyton, where are you? Right here. And Peyton's right next to you, and there's just a guy. Basically, one of the blue coats like, sees that there are enough knives on Henry, and he turns around and just puts a knife to Peyton's throat because he sees that, for some reason, you seem to care about this kid. So there's a guy holding a knife to Peyton now. Daryl, we need an army to rescue our sons. We can't run away from this. I slam on the brakes. Ooh, Henry Jesus. accidentally stabbed. There's a lot of people with knives to their throats in the back here. Yeah, uh-huh. so... Uh, <laughs> well, wait, 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 fine. What way is he facing? Yeah, I just so want to... The- Try to slap the knife away like a kid in the backseat of a car. Okay, so Peyton with the knife to him, they're up against the side of it. The knife is sort of parallel to the direction that the thing is moving. So if you stop, it's going to slide against his, his okay, neck. Okay, well, then I won't stop. It. Um, so if, yeah, if you want to come to his, a gentle, you could come to a gentle stop. Yeah, you could just slow down like normally. But if you want to try to slap away, go ahead and roll dexterity okay. against me. Uh, eight. Okay, I got a 10. So you try to like wrench it out of the guy's way. And he goes, no, no. This is bullshit. I've lost brothers trying to go into that fucking pyramid and kill the mummy that's there. And, and you guys are not just going to get away. You're going, but you're, you got to go back and face justice. I'm not touching you. You can't get mad. I'm not touching you. You can't get mad. <laughs> Sir, I'm going to pull his I van. Mad. Sir, I'm going to pull his van over and we will talk about it. But you take that knife from that boy's throat. He had nothing to do with this. Are you saying you're the type of person who's going to kill a young boy for no reason? He's you put that knife down. We'll sit down. We'll talk about this like men. You put it down. Are you telling the truth or are you bluffing? No, I'm telling the truth. I'm going to stop the van. Okay. We're then, uh, then roll persuasion. 19 plus. Whoa. Minus right, one. 18. That is fine. So you get dad advantage because it's an I'm oh, going to pull this. the front seat. Well, yeah. no, but it's also this is an I'm going to pull this car I'm over. The conversation. Conversation. Well, that's an automatic advantage. <laughs> that's an automatic advantage for dads. <laughs> right, sure. Don't make me pull this car. You're, they say it's kind of like do make me pull this car 15 on over. the other one. So uh, okay. First so, one's better. So the blue coat narrows his eyes at you and he goes like, unlike you guys, I'm not a murderer. And he sheaves his dagger and then like pats Peyton on the shoulders in a kind of condescending way. And he goes, now stop the car like you said.
we're out of the town at this point. You're, right? Yeah, you're basically you went over the the drawbridge, which yeah. is still down, and you're like, you know, if you Good turn around, it would take drawbridge. 45 seconds to yeah. go back to the fucking. Okay, I pull over. Good thing we didn't start to raise the drawbridge, so we hit a super cool so we jump on the way. Super, <laughs> super cool <laughs> jump or anything. A super it's cool jump that, that, that like didn't maybe would have made the dagger go inside Peyton's <laughs> neck when you landed. Hey, did you say something about a mummy? Yeah, there's a mummy allegedly inside this big ass pyramid that you. You, all of you, dropped on my town. Well, thank God it's not a daddy. So one of the one of oh. the guys just jumps out of the van <laughs> <laughs> to his death. <laughs> uh, I pull a car over. Okay, cool. Everybody, get out. He goes, no, you, I'm not getting out. You want to talk inside this van? Let's walk outside. No, we get out of the van. We're I get I, out of the van. If we get out, I get out of the van and I open the side door. Everybody, get out. Uh, roll <laughs> persuasion with disadvantage. Uh, Eleven. Okay, so eleven is not going to be good enough. He goes, no, you're just going to drive. You're going to you're going to take this beast away. You're going to ride this beast away. The How second am I, I going to take here. the beast away? You no, know what? Fine. Everybody else, if this young man doesn't want to get out of the van, everybody else can. Everybody else get out of the van. We'll talk to him in the van, like he wants to be talked to in the van. <laughs> I still have a sword pointed at my throat here, so I hop out of the well, van. Well, Henry, you're going to stay in there with him until he puts. Well, that sword you know down. what, Daryl? Maybe I am going to stay in because maybe we need to be held accountable for our own actions, no matter what the consequences and no matter what the context is. And just because you've got other stuff going on doesn't mean that these people don't have a right to their own anger at us and i know it wasn't our fault but sometimes horrible tragedies happen by accident and that's just a dark thing you have to live with maybe it's important that we take responsibility for our actions we I, killed we're already hundreds outside, of people right? with our actions we need to respect this town and we need to come to some kind of resolution I, I put here. my hands over Peyton's ears i go hey buddy you're not gonna hear this for a second i put i go hey henry stop your woke bullshit for one moment you almost killed Peyton here because you couldn't take handling your own guilt for two freaking seconds. You guys walked in there and almost got us all killed. And I had to get a van, put you all in there, and you couldn't even put a seatbelt on, goddammit. I understand you want to fix things, but that's not a reason to get almost everybody killed. So if you could stop it for one second, we could figure out how to solve this thing. Now, can everybody please get out of the van so we can figure out how to solve everybody's problems? Thank you very much. And please, no more knives to this boy's young throat. Thank you. And I release it. Peyton, did you hear any of that? Roll perception. <laughs> 18 plus one, 19. Oh, okay, never mind then. I what? was going to say he like put his hands up and like blocked your hands. <laughs> <laughs> so you thought you were covering them, but you didn't. While no. they're arguing, I want to see if I can snatch the keys out of the ignition. Oh. I mean, I have them. I, I would have definitely taken them with yeah, me. Yeah, if you when stop I the car oh. and took it, I assume he just has them. You, you want to try, try to pick them, them from Carol? Yeah. Okay. Okay, go ahead. I mean, and I was roll. screaming. I feel like she gets advantage. Roll, yeah, roll sleight of hand with advantage. Okay. It's just like a pair of pants, just like a hand comes out. <laughs> I like literally rolled the same again. Okay. Um, That's your superpower. Uh, I guess. Um, yeah, I did not. <laughs> I okay. Just, so you, so, so Daryl, you see the pair of pants and a hand coming out of it. Ron, do you want move. the keys? If you want the keys, just ask for the keys. Can I have the keys, Daryl? What do you want them for? I want to turn on the car alarm so that everybody stops arguing. Uh, okay. I, I understand you. We don't need that. We'll just stop <laughs> arguing right now. Okay. If we could all just talk without everybody trying to kill each other for one second, then we could probably figure this out. So there are three blue coats remaining in the van. Two of them are holding knives at Henry, and one of them had a knife on Peyton, and he's since put it away. Yes. You want the ring lead that? What's your name, bud? Uh, he goes, my name is Dines Carlson. Okay. Uh, that's a name uh, submitted by, uh, 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 they submitted their own name, Dines Carlson. Dines. Dines. Penis. They say pronounced like penis, but with a D instead of the P. <laughs> I like penis. that. And, All right. and Carlson is pronounced like Carlson. Sir, as you can tell, there's five of us and three of you. None of us have our weapons out. One of us, the person you have, can turn to a bear. If you could put your weapons oh, down. Oh, so we're doing we threats all talk now. About That's this. fine. No, yeah, yeah. It's not definitely. a threat. It's can we all talk about this instead of having weapons out right now? Well, no, because the weapons are the only leverage we have over you. You just said, as you pointed out, there's five of you and one of you can turn into a bear. No, that's the point is that we don't have weapons out. We're not going to, we don't want to fight. So can we talk about this right now? We can talk right now with the vibes out. What's going on? Let's go back and talk to, to, look. What do you want from us? We want you to go back to Neverwinter and face justice for what you did. Who's justice? <laughs> <laughs> His name is David Boreanaz, and he is our boss. And if you had the audacity to drop a pyramid into our town, ruin our whole economic viability as a major hub of trade in this area, and then bounce, that's just rude. It's, <laughs> it's just rude. It's just rude. You need to go to, to prison for it, or you need to go inside and deal with the, the issue. You need to get rid of the something. What are the laws for like um, for like big gladiator fights where you kill people? Now, those are legal. Those are legal? Yeah. Okay. So that's cool. Yeah. They can send it to fight in those. Okay. 
Wait a second. You're explaining to me that the, all those people were consenting to fight and die. That's I like how a majority of them were. Okay, yeah. Okay. I nudged Daryl. Daryl. Yo. You never talk to cops. We're not talking until we have our lawyer present. Oh, yeah. We, um, What are the lawyer... Law- <laughs> I can't say lawyer. What are the lawyers like in Neverwinter? Like, are there charming, roguish sort of uh, defense attorneys that might fall in love with us or <laughs> anything like that? Um, and do they, do they say, I object a lot? And then do they get a talking to by the judge? And do they have a twinkle in their eye? And are they like kind of like Richard Gere or like maybe sometimes Matthew McConaughey? Um, yeah, what are the odds of us getting off here? Lawyer. Uh- well, we, yeah, we can provide you a lawyer. We have lawyers. All those words you said, I didn't understand maybe 90% of them. <laughs> lawyer, Dennis. If you let me arrest you, then lawyer. yeah, you'll get a lawyer. No, lawyer. Gentlemen, I think that these people have a right to their anchor at us. And I am not going to raise a hand to stop them. At least not right now. I don't I know am. what seeking justice means. If you really think, Daryl, that we shouldn't... Get arrested by we these th- people. Daryl, if you really think that we shouldn't seek any kind of atonement for killing 200 fucking people, if you really can live with that and you were going to murder three more people in this town because of your goddamn fucking superiority bullshit, then be my guest. Kill all three of them. Execute these men right now. You're strong enough. Go do it. Or if you maybe there's a shred of a conscience within you and you feel like the fact that innocent people died because of our actions and you want to face some goddamn accountability about that, maybe you could be a fucking man and we can fucking face consequences we can face what we're doing maybe the fact that we're chasing our kids maybe the fact that we're searching for five people doesn't excuse the fact that we committed an atrocity here i put up my hands i surrender please i would strongly suggest that we don't allow ourselves to gently go into a law system i've I, have you glenn have you ever been arrested doesn't seem like you have any desire to get picked up to go to court by a bunch of people who are okay with gladiator fights when we were trying to save our children. Surrender, please. So Peyton is looking up at Daryl and he's like, did you did you guys kill a bunch of people? What happened when you were here? While they were trying to kill us. And I feel like this is a thing that's lost upon not just uh, some of the people in our group, but maybe even the DM at times. While we were in the middle of a fight, we threw magic beans down. And a pyramid came out. And that seems to make some people think we should just be quote unquote man. That's a very toxic masculine thing to say there, uh, uh, Henry, by the way. I believe that it might be coming from an element of privilege that you think you can just walk into a law system and think it's very just. I don't think that's the case. So, Peyton, yes, here's what happened. You tell me what you think. You know, God always said the minds of children, right? Come like like lamb to to Jesus. They're very pure. Oh, okay. And while we were getting attacked by these people. For no reason, because we were just going to a dungeon trying to save our kids, and right, they had right. kidnapped our children. Right, right. Actually, uh, Henry's kids. Uh, we were in the middle of a fight. I threw some magic beans to help Henry out, and without knowing what they do, one of them turned into a pyramid. And then it crushed the tower, the torture tower, by the way, where we're being kept. And then, yes, some and people they were also died, holding, and we were And they were holding here. people against their will. We were holding people against their will, and we were coming here to hopefully bring mercenaries to then get rid of the monster in the tower. Now... I can't help but think that maybe some people are being a little judgmental because they have their own problems. Because I feel like that's a whole lot of shit that did not happen on purpose. And we've done pretty much everything we could to help people out. So, no, I'm not going to go. Hey, Henry, if you want to go and turn yourself into this system that has orgies and murder as a punishment. And when I find your kids, I'll tell them, hey, their dad, he was really self-righteous and right about it when we get there and finally save him. Oh, my God. (sighs) Okay. So, All right. All right. Well, let's let's. It's cool. Let's, let's, everybody take a breath. Let's be cool. Let's be cool. Okay. So my read of that is that you were in a really rowdy sitch and it got real bad and you did something kind of without thinking about it and a lot of people got hurt and it's not your fault that you did the rowdy thing without thinking about it, but like, it's a bummer. Oh if, yeah, if you absolutely. Killed, if you killed a bunch of people, that's a bummer. And like, I don't know. You guys are pretty good at beating the ass. So like, I feel like if you went in and it wasn't a cool situation with the law and stuff. Like you, we could probably just leave. Yeah, I mean, like we've we've had this bummer situation, uh, as you said, Peyton, several times, and we've beaten ass every time. <laughs> and here's the thing: uh, there's a lot of talk of toxic masculinity around, and I think that's wonderful. And I think the manliest thing that a man can do is get arrested because it's really manly and cool. And when you're a criminal, people are like, "That man is a criminal," and um. 
Peyton's yes. like, I would like to get some jailhouse like tats. Well, like, I've never Peyton, spent we're not time gonna, in the clink. Peyton, we're not going to let you're not going to be you're, you're not involved in this. But we I definitely, feel like I would you, get hard in the clink. Yeah, yeah no, Peyton, you can come with it. Please get arrested. I would, with us, I would start like like lifting weights and stuff. Again, I think a very reasonable thing, which you know, not, I'm not saying told you so, but as the original thing was to honk and like you know call them down so we could talk to them. I think a very reasonable thing to do is to communicate and talk to them in a way to figure out how to best solve this situation. Okay, without so, so, possibly being either instantly killed or arrested because Peyton saying that we could beat ass I understand that but I also would prefer not to have to beat ass because I will do anything to save my child I want to talk to them and see if we can find a way to resolve this so Dinas says you mentioned you wanted to hire mercenaries well any mercenaries have to have the approval of the local constable before they can actually do their work otherwise they could be doing crimes and stuff like that and the constable has to approve those things so even if you did want to hire some mercenaries to do whatever, kill a monster, whatever the hell you were saying, you'd have to talk to Boreanaz. Yeah. So you might as well just talk to Boreanaz. Yeah, so, if, All if, right. so let's Tell Boreanaz to come out here and talk to us. To come out us. here and talk to us. We're not going in. So roll uh, Persuasion. Okay, to the wrong room, motherfucker. A little thing called a bona fide organic and natural 20. <laughs> oh, Jesus Christ. Okay. So Dinas talks to one of the other, the blue coats and says, yeah, go back to town, get Boreanaz, bring him out here, bring as many guards as you want. Um, and so, no, he comes alone. No, you can. I mean, yeah. I mean, if he, whatever makes him feel safe to I mean, come I'll and talk t- to I can, us, I can tell him he comes alone, but there's no way he's going to do yeah. that. Like, mm. I don't know. He seemed kind of roguish and like, you know, anything, uh, he's his own man. He solves his own problems and he, he doesn't like feeling good or happy. He but just he always liked- had a team around him of roughly four to five <laughs> other people. Yeah. It's pretty um, cool. Quick dad huddle. Dad huddle. Guys. Dad huddle. See, you have a whole dad huddle. I still have guys with knives to my Yeah, throat, you have two right? guys. That you have, yeah, right, I'm not yeah. joining the oh, dad they're not arranging. They haven't, like, so, so the, they're still using Henry's collateral. Oh, okay, so, like, we're going to do this, right? We we need a dad huddle. We kind of need him. We'll, we'll actually put him back. You can just talk. Just talk to Defeats him. the purpose of it. Are you guys dads? I was. Yeah. No, I already, <laughs> I already, I already played that joke with CERN. Uh, no, we're not dads. Well, all right. Just close your ears. <laughs> so we're holding the knife with one hand like he like plugs his one of his ears with his other and, hand and, and, and he tries oh, to put his remaining ear on his shoulder i plug the other guy's ears i'm oh, like i'm sorry about this very helpful okay first of all i'd like to start the dad hole by saying i'm sorry that i blew my stack and i you are absolutely right to call me out that saying that you should act like a man is a gendered and shitty way to phrase what i was trying to say which is that i think it's important that we act like adults in this situation and I could tell that I had gotten, as the boys say when they're playing their video games, a little tilted. Uh, <laughs> so I decided, you know, it was time to take a breather and let you guys talk. And I'm very happy with how you guys handled the situation. So, hey, guys, hey man, okay. we all get we all get heat. I go, I look at the two guards like I'm just gonna punch him in the shoulder. Is that is that cool? Don't like stab him or anything. Like, don't don't hit him that hard. It's, I'm not, like, I don't want to get blamed for like beating up a criminal. I appreciate it. I didn't mean to get heated at you either, Henry. And I go, it's, it's, I pop it, in the shoulder. It is, as they say, all good. Because you're right. This is a wild town. And they were clearly up to a lot of bad stuff when we got here. Yeah. And they were going to commit not, genocide. I'm not in favor of throwing myself at the mercy of a system we know nothing about. And I think you were, I got very emotional and you were very right to point point that out to me. I'm going to be honest and say that I have not slept well thinking about the people that got crushed by the giant pyramid that we dropped. I almost lost one of my boys in that pyramid, as you may recall. And I remember the fear in my heart as I was digging through that rubble to try to find him and the relief that I felt when I got him out. And then I thought about how many parents like CERN who did not get to have that when they lost their loved ones in that pyramid. Whether what they were doing beforehand was evil or not, that doesn't feel right to me. And maybe it is selfish. I think you're right that it is selfish and it does not take priority over saving our own children. I do wish to unburden myself of that guilt however I can. And I, I agree that I, I will never sleep at night knowing what we did to CERN, but I just know that this town was literally going to commit genocide at any moment. So I just yeah, you remember, don't feel I see, comfortable I seem remember, walking up to... I seem to remember going up this tower and seeing a room full of people about to be executed. So like the net of that is there would have been dead anyway if we hadn't showed up. Henry, I'd just like to it. say, Henry, you're the best darn guy I know in this whole world. Oh and if you go to prison, you're not going to be able to make this place better. So I'm just saying the four of us, we need to stick together and we need to make, do everything we can to make this place a better place. And hearing Daryl say that Henry's the best darn guy he knows, uh, Henry reaches out and grabs Daryl's sunglasses and puts them <laughs> and says, thank you, Daryl. I appreciate that. Guys, I'm kind of bored and I was wondering if I could <laughs> I was wondering if I could just go find Boreanaz. Okay, so Boreanaz comes back with... Uh, hey, Ron, did you find him? 
Yeah, frown nose. <laughs> <laughs> Boreanaz comes back flanked by a dozen blue coats, and he looks significantly worse since the last time you but saw still him. Still hot though. Still, he's still hot, but in a like no. I'm a over detective kind of way. Seal Team Six sort of a way. Seal Team Six sort of <laughs> way. A sort of like latter seasons of Bones sort of way when he sort of didn't care so much oh, and knew man. he was they were getting renewed no matter what kind of way. He basically just looks really tired. You smell the alcohol before you even see him. Oh no! Um, oh. He's his clothes are all raggedy and shit. He looks like he hasn't slept in a really long time and he goes like oh well, look who look who it is the daddies is he a little uh, drunk yeah I mean, <laughs> yeah. as far as you can tell he's stumbling and he's just so. wearing a booze scented cologne <laughs> yeah, <him>. yeah. <laughs> and he goes like look you came back are you gonna you gonna kill the rest of us are you gonna summon, help me summon to do the for reals or like what's <laughs> the deal I mean wouldn't those two things just to clarify wouldn't those two things be the same thing kill the rest of you or summon the doodler which no. whose purpose was to what no the purpose of the zo- <laughs> the purpose <laughs> of the doodler we discovered a new Anthony voice <laughs> was to change the world and remake it and make everything better but instead you brought in a big pyramid with a thing inside that I thought maybe is the doodler Maybe the thing inside is the doodler, and we set people in, and they didn't come back. But it's just it's not the doodler; it's just a mummy lord. And so now no one wants to live here, and I look like an asshole. Oh, maybe guys, guys, start, guys, he's a- really drunk. So maybe if we just sort of like snap our fingers and then do a little ta-da sound. I'm not drunk. You're drunk. Don't t- fucking tell me that I'm drunk. <laughs> Fuck off. <laughs> so- okay. Here's what I want. What What do you want, David? I want you to, <laughs> I want you to clear out the pyramid buddy, that's end. What, that's what we were here for, buddy. That's literally, what? That, why else would we be here? I talked to, I know. The, to Benedict you're, Cabbage Patch. You're talking right now. And he said that you were here to hire soldiers. Yeah, to clear out the pyramid. Yeah, one of the things we want to do hey, is clear out the pyramid. Do we have any water in the car for, oh, for yeah, David? Oh, yeah, we absolutely have. David. Here's some water and a cliff bar. So he goes, I have water, and he like shows a flask and like. No, 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 like no, real water. No, I have no. water. It's David, fine. honey, you need to sit down. <laughs> <laughs> somebody, uh, somebody roll persuasion. Well, I think that's somebody, uh, roll, there. somebody roll hold his hair back. <laughs> <laughs> I got a natural one. <laughs> <laughs> and he goes, you, no, you're right. I haven't hydrated in a while. And he un- <laughs> <laughs> uncorks the flask and goes, go, 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 go. Oh, clearly not wine. He goes, oh, so much better. What if we just hired a bunch of mercenaries and cleared it out for you? I mean. You know, I'm sure that you were have had difficulty like levying taxes due to you know yes, your poor leadership. Yes, that. But we got but the solution right here. What really chaps my perfectly toned ass <laughs> is that you didn't hang around to see what a bummer it was. But you said it was with fine. the mummy. What do you mean it was fine? <laughs> you said when we left, you were like super happy with it. Yeah, I, no, I thought it I was distinctly the remember. Brother. First of all, I was not going to be doing, I distinctly remember I was not going to be doing much standing around because I nutted myself pretty bad with my chucks and you kind of like left. Glenn and brought you, the receipts. <laughs> Glenn knows exactly what happened. No, I remember you nutting yourself for that it was good. <laughs> it was fun. It was what made me convinced that the world had changed because <laughs> basically apple juice started jizzing out of a pyramid <laughs> that appeared randomly. I, my whole perception of the world changed in that one night, but then it turns hey, out I'm the world is the same. Which way is the, the pyramid and the mummy? It's in the center of town. Okay. Uh, which way is that? Behind me. Okay. Cool. So, David, you're telling us if we clear out this place for you, and if we go in and do it, that we get the mercenaries, which we can use to yes. march on the castle. We I will give you permission maybe, to hire. We him. kill this mummy that's been cursing the town. You get the treasure inside. Even that's what that was our plan. Was for you what guys to have the treasure. I love that plan. And then on, plan. on, I would say one condition. I think David Boreanis, you need to step down as ruler of Neverwinter. <laughs> I think David, <laughs> David, David, why, David, <laughs> where has drunk Anthony been my whole life? David, you know, if you, you said you want the whole world to change. Yeah. Well, I'm asking you to start with the man in the mirror. I'm asking you to change David your Boreanaz ways. David does not have a reflection. <laughs> oh, is he a vampire? No. Oh, wait. No. That's I'm not. not a, he's not a vampire. He is. If you want to make the world a better place, take a look at yourself and then make a change. 
That's a little song called The Man in the Mirror by a man who's, you know, own lifestyle maybe doesn't <laughs> sync up with it. But, you know, I think there's words of wisdom there. And maybe, you know, also, maybe Will you need is to start clearly by... looking at the lyrics on Google right now. <laughs> maybe, uh, maybe you should start by working on yourself and, you know, reforming the world within before you try to reform the world without, my friend. I mean, yeah, I mean, honestly, I want to do like a great. sage wisdom role for that. Like, yeah, to draw, what would that be? I feel like that's persuasion. That's persuasion, but it's true. How can it be persuasion mm. if it's true? Because it's not deception. Mm. Well, that time I got a 16. Okay. I'm going to roll to see if I can get away from everybody and start heading toward the pyramid. <laughs> okay, go ahead and, I mean, are you trying to make a stealthy thing of it? Or no, you just I'm just going to walk away. Then you just the walk thing. away. Okay, cool. Oh, well, anyway, Ron's walking away, but guys, that sounds like a pretty good deal to me. So yeah. Boreanis points at Ron, he's like, is somebody going to, ah, fuck hey, Ron, where are you going? That's the weird one, it's whatever. The, it's, I'm, I'm going to talk to mummy. Uh, Ron, I don't think you should do that on your own. I'm going to see what's under wraps here. <laughs> oh, um. Yeah, I'm going to head towards this pyramid. Anyway, see you later, guys. If you want to help, that's cool. See, that's why he was my favorite. So are we good to follow? I mean, Mr. Yeah. Boreas, are we good to follow? If you want me, if you want us to give you an escort into town, we will escort you to the pyramid. And then once you come out holding the mummy's head. No, guys, the pyramid's this way. <laughs> I'll escort you. We'll all go together so you don't run again in your horse, in your big white horse. It smells good. <laughs> it does. Thank you. Well, what are we talking about? Go back to town. So I forget. Did you say you're going to not become leader after this? Yeah, I'll quit. Yeah. Okay. It, right. just, sure. Why not? I don't know if he's even going to remember this. Yeah. So maybe yeah. we should have this conversation <laughs> when he sobers up. This yeah. As far as you can tell right now, he believes it. But like, who knows? Is, is, is this fair. is this going to get, you know, blinked away in the hangover? Who knows? All right. Well, I guess uh, let's uh, let's pack up. I, I go ahead and I grab some water bottles for everybody. I'll carry Ron's and I get some Cliff Bars. I go. Let's go after Ron there. Okay. All right. So we go up to the pyramid. I guess. Okay. Yes. But how far? I mean, we have to chase after like Ron. Did you start running? Are you just ahead of us? No, I, I think I'm just walking. Okay. I, I run to catch up with Ron. We all okay. do a quick jog to catch up with Ron. <laughs> so I've sent you an email. So Ooh. on the outside of the pyramid, you see what I emailed you on some sort of tablet that's been attached to the pyramid, but the tablet is clearly broken, and this is all you can see on the part that remains. And so to describe it for the people listening at home... I uh, didn't get an email. Am I off the podcast? <laughs> it, it may take a second to go because the internet is slow. I'm off the podcast. <laughs> I'm sorry, guys. Uh, so the, the, oh, yeah, this email says best off the podcast. Oh, that's yeah, weird. That's sorry. This, this is how I chose to tell you. <laughs> uh, so it's basically three lines. The first line has... The letters E N G E space O. The second line has U M, and the third line has H E space R I. Engi O. Um. um Hiri. Guys, it says M Bop Bop <laughs> Budap Do Bop. <laughs> and the entrance is a little bit dark, but uh, you can just go in. There's no door stopping you from going in or whatever. Hey, were we gonna do mercenaries, or are we just going in solo, boys? Well, I think. Hey, David, can we can what? we have, can we have a bunch of mercenaries to go in with us? Uh. Please. Yeah, I mean, yeah, you could you could pay them for this, but then this would be the job. Then you wouldn't be able to buy more mercenaries after. Could we buy? I want one. I want twenty mercenaries, but each one from a different location for Gone with a different accent. With a different accent. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> let me uh, let me go let me go check with uh, Benedict Cabbage Pat. Oh no, I'm sorry. They only we only have guys who sound exactly like. Me. I'm so sorry. If you wait for a week, I can get guys from other all around with the Danish accents. And is he the bullywog now? Oh shit! <laughs> that was Walter the Immoral. <laughs> I thought that was... Uh, I don't know. I thought, what? What did the started <laughs> yeah, like Oh, this? maybe he did. I can't remember. Yeah, he's out like that. Anyway, sorry. Three voices. <laughs> I guess it would be I good to say that money. I haven't yet had an opportunity for you guys to meet a little Danish boy. <laughs> <laughs> yes, please. What? That's so German, though. It's a, it's a, Dan, it's a Danish boy, because you do it's this the with Danish. the ishes. Yes. Before we decide whether to go in with mercenaries, maybe I, I, this plaque intrigues me. Mm-hmm. It and seems like there's letters missing. It reminds me of like one of the little bits they would do in one of my favorite series of movies, The Mummy. And considering that this is like a mummy type situation, you know, in those movies, there'd be like a cryptic riddle or some kind of curse and you'd have to like unlock it. And then, you know, I always remembered that the people who plowed in heedlessly without trying to decipher the message on the outside of the tomb usually met like a bad end. So behind you, Boreanaz goes, oh, no, 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 right, 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 right. I forgot a thing. <clears throat> so... <laughs> Pretty much everybody who's come in hasn't come out, but there was one guy who said that like pretty much halfway in, there were like sacred texts and that those are supposed to like help you like unravel the mystery 
and figure out how to survive. So there are some sacred texts you probably want to find. I think that'll lead you to the Mummy Lord. Uh, continue as Is you this were. one of them? Did we find one already? With this thing on the SD? No, I mean, this is just, I guess this is, I don't know. Oh, wait, and you said that it's like a partial thing. It's like things are missing from it. Is yes, that what said? clearly this was part of some sort of like tablet that like broke. Is it broken on both sides? Or yes, on just... the edges. So you're looking at the middle of the thing. Mm. Mm. Revenge of oh. the Sith. The Sith. <laughs> is the best Star Wars? <laughs> the best Star Wars. Yeah, that's crazy. It fits right in. Anthony Red Burr. rum. Surprise. This has all been a long game about how much I love Revenge of the <laughs> Execute Order 66, Freddy. Yes. Revenge. <laughs> <laughs> Only a dungeon master deals in absolutes. Uh, Eng definitely is revenge or something like that. Well, it wouldn't be mum. Well, I guess we should go in. <laughs> I guess what I'm Avenge saying. Avenge okay. old mummy. He oh, rises. Mum. <laughs> Ooh, he rises. Or the, she rises. She rises. Or oh, the right. You. Are you going to go inside? Oh, yeah, something to the right. Yeah, maybe. I, it does seem like, especially now that we're a little bit less cash heavy than we were when we started this misadventure, that maybe we should save the... I don't know. I'm getting kind of like a trap vibe from this place. Like, considering that like a bunch of guys have gone in and haven't come out, I don't know oh, that wait, we need do, to... Is, is maybe, it, so you're saying one person did come out? Yeah. Bring him to us. Uh, okay, just a second. Uh, and so he brings back a small little Danish looking boy. <laughs> <laughs> What's his name? What's his name? <laughs> <laughs> my, 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 his, his name, as submitted by Rachel Fenneman, is Sex Caliber Cross Power. <laughs> <laughs> Sex Caliber? Yes, that is my name. <laughs> Hi there, buddy. Nice, uh, Daryl Wilson, nice to meet you. You may call me out. Caliber for short. Uh, can you say that name again? Sex Caliber Horse Power? Uh, do you have a nickname? Yes, it is Caliber. Is it right, Sexy Horse? You mind if I call you Cal? Cal is a, is a wonderful name. Mind if I call you name. Sex? I would mind that very much. <laughs> I would, well, prefer, I would prefer not to be called. Okay, well, <laughs> can, you, can you real quick? Can you just say Stroopwafel for me? Stroopwafel. <laughs> <laughs> can you say I rode the bicycle by the canals and went to buy some Stroopwafel? I could. Glenn, is that what you brought him here? Is that what you brought him here? Hey, listen. I think Ron was going to ask a question. Listen. Yeah. Um. Could you just read what this should be? <laughs> <laughs> I, I do not know. I, I I went in. I was I was an intern for the archaeologist at Fenton, and, and they all died. And I I I, I just ran as, as fast as I could. So I know you said I know text. very little. Yes, there was there was some text inside that seemed to have some letters missing, different than these. This thing on out, outside, I I just don't know. It seems to be the name of the, the pyramid. I guess I don't know. Or maybe the person that made it. I I, I have no way of knowing. But mm. inside there was there were some traps. There were traps. And then <laughs> on the other side of the traps there were there was the secret texts that seemed to be a lot of interest to, to the archaeologist friend. But then they went forward and they went into a very dark tunnel with a bridge and then they I heard screaming and they disappeared. So Is, maybe they just had a really good time. <laughs> Sorry, what? Maybe they just had a really good time. It's possible they are still there just enjoying themselves. Is it like tight space in there? No, actually not 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 at all. There's like puzzles and stuff? Uh, yeah. Uh, I was I, just thinking, have you guys ever done these escape rooms? <laughs> I, no, you know, I've been wanting to do one. But Girls Company did one, and it's, it was fun, but like, there was like, it was like a group of 10, and when it was done, I couldn't help like all of our friends. I overheard friends talking, they were like, I think there's like one too many people in there, you know, and I was thinking like, you know, it's, it's like, if you have too many people in an escape room, it's not very fun. Like, like you, like, Buddy, I think so life I think is an before. escape room. Am I right? Oh, yeah. I, I have an idea. Maybe we don't need mercenaries is my point. Maybe we could put the mercenaries like on retainer and hear me out. We run a very long string with a tin can on either end Ooh. and we bring it in with us. And if we get into a dicey situation, we can shout into the tin can, help mercenaries help. And the mercenaries will rush in and help us. And like, that'll be the job. I thought you were going to say, maybe you do one of those things where like you touch fingertips to fingertips and you make like a snake from where you go. So one, we won't get lost. If it's like a maze in there because we'll literally have a string of people. And then also if there's a problem, you just tuck on their hand and be like, everybody come in and help out. Well, Okay. Sex caliber, did you help with any of the um, question word, the sacred text word tricks? No, no. I, again, I was just an intern. I was writing down what they found there. Fetching oh, coffees? Um, okay, can we, like, read that? Yeah, if you wish, yes. I, I will give you the translation. So it seemed to be a very large paragraph that was missing every shirt letter. Every, every shirt letter. <laughs> shirt letter? Yes, every shirt letter. Uh, seemed to be gone, but it was this was near where they disappeared from. So it's basically a lot of gibberish. That's I, I don't. I, now that I'm thinking about this. Probably shouldn't have put it in an audio podcast because <laughs> it's a full paragraph of things where the third letter is missing. It's like this. Uh, uh, 
head, uller, uet, we, dumpty, etc. Like shit like that. Okay. We'll put it under our Patreon or something. Listen, if we're going to start buying on these mercenaries, we might as well use them and test them out on this thing here. See if they're trustworthy and if they're good, we'll take them along with us to like Ravenloft and stuff. So the right? way mercenaries works, you pay them by the day, right? Yeah. So it's okay. 10, 10 gold a day. What if we call it an internship? We, we, yeah, we'll call it an We don't have to pay them, and then they work for us, and they give us all of their expertise, and they probably do more work than we do, and then we don't have to respect them quite as much. Glenn we is just already have to sketching be- out like a tour poster where it's like, you want to work for the baddest dudes, <laughs> and it's like cool drawings of all of us. So Benedict Cabbage Patch is still here if you want to try to... Convince awesome. him to do an internship. Yeah. <laughs> we're looking for a social media rock star to join our team. <laughs> we're we're oh, looking fuck. for a self-starter with thick skin. Because <laughs> there's traps that'll cut your skin. <laughs> Who isn't afraid of ambiguity and not... <laughs> I literally saw that on a job post once. Isn't afraid of ambiguity. Oh, and I'm just oh, like... No. This is the biggest ass yeah. in I'm the like, world. sorry that I'm suing you already. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So I think we have about like uh, the equivalent of like three hundred thousand dollars, more or less. Yeah, because we had one point seven. Oh, damn, at we 12. got wiped out. Even yeah. more of a reason to not pay interns. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, we could we could definitely hire some. I yeah, mean, so yeah, kid, I guess you, we still have plenty of money. Down. You're writing this down, Benedict, right? Like a go getter who can. Uh, hang in a fast-paced competitive environment. I have, I have mercenaries for any occasion you could wish, but we do generally, we work for payment, for gold. But have you ever considered working for exposure? <laughs> exposure and experience. We need somebody who can anticipate the needs of this campaign. <laughs> <laughs> Now, 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 why on earth would we need to explain? We are world-renowned amongst the across favor. There will be light administrative work. <laughs> well, but here's the thing, Bandit. I'm not asking for your rock stars. I'm asking for growth hackers. You know what I mean? Like, the kinds of folks who are looking to get their feet wet in the mercenary business. Like like this Danish kid here. Yes, yes, the people who want to, to level up their skills. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. Uh, so go ahead and roll persuasion. I feel on him. more morally disgusted by this than by dropping the pyramid. <laughs> I'm going to roll for synergy. <laughs> uh, that was my persuasion roll. Seven plus nine, uh, 16. 16. Okay. So he'll roll opposed, I guess, insight. So he goes, like, I have, uh, I have one man who might fit the bill. Yes, yes, yes. And so he goes and he comes back. So Camden Hulk sent us a name for a description, and it was just Doug. <laughs> so, Whoa. so Doug, Doug just shows yeah. I don't even know oh his last gosh, name yeah, yeah. He's just, I'm Doug <laughs> Doug hey, the intern what's going on hey quick dad huddle um, with hey, Doug I, no not with, oh, with Doug wait, I mean yeah, Doug, Doug, Doug starts he wants. coming in he's like yeah what's yeah, up yeah Doug you can hey, stand this is like an upper level meeting Doug yeah Doug <laughs> yeah, okay, hey the I'll, room's taken hey can you get us some coffees I hate us I'll go, so yeah, yeah, sure I'll be right back so Ron I know you're the businessman but I just want to understand what and Glenn I mean, you guys have hired interns I haven't honestly I'm mostly at home and stuff sorry we've hired Team players. Okay, I just want to. We do have. My Excuse me. Like, we've hired Doug. <laughs> I got four black coffees. Four black. Uh, do you guys want the oh, coffee? Okay. Hey, I, like, I, I want actually, the coffee. Fast as hell. <laughs> yeah. Wow, Th- Doug's th- a good well, intern. Thanks, thanks, Doug. Man, he's like, this is Doug. <laughs> <laughs> have you not met Doug? He's this. Is, he's great. Hey, uh, I, could, I could go for a coffee too. I'll be right back. I just want to. We do have like three hundred thousand dollars. Like, do we want just Doug for free, or do we want to <laughs> spend a little bit on? <laughs> I'm like, like well, you know, right here, man. I can hear you. Well, yeah, you know, well, I, hey, Doug, I read this you, thing. Doug, and have you fought a lot? Uh, I'm, 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 uh, I, I, I have, uh, uh, I'm, uh, I've, uh, 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 um, uh, uh, yeah, no. <laughs> Hmm. I think we need to save as much money as we can for this is rough. This I think we need to save as much money as we can for the Neverwinter campaign. And really, what's not worth the Neverwinter the, the Barovia Barovia. And really, what's worth more, three hundred thousand dollars or the chance to be on a team like ours? Also, uh, getting the phone number of an important person. I'm gonna write my phone number on that coffee cup. By the way, excuse me, Doug. Can I grab that coffee cup? Yeah, All right. please, please Doug, do. are you good at puzzles? Uh, oh yeah, I beat ass puzzles. <laughs> what does that? What does that mean? I mean, that means I do the jumble every day. <laughs> <laughs> All right. What's the jumble in this world? Jumble is uh, a guy comes up to you and he says a bunch of words out of order, and you got to understand what he's what he's. Oh, actually well, that saying. could be helpful. That actually is pretty helpful. Yeah. I, I, the only thing I was concerned about is that you're as strong as your weakest link, and I just wanted to make sure that we didn't put him in harm's way. But like, if you're good at puzzles. Like he, if he's a puzzle guy, I my vote is we save our money for we're going to need as many resources as we can to mount this assault on human resources, especially. See, I was going <laughs> to suggest we just ask uh, 
uh, Benedict, whatever is the Cabbage Patch, who the smartest and best at puzzles was. But if that, like, Doug's pretty good. We like Listen, worst I know so worse. If we get into trouble, we send Doug back out with some money to get more mercenaries and to coffee. bring us in. Guys, can we and pay co- Doug? And coffee. Doug, we're going to pay you 10 pounds. We're going to pay you 10 pounds. Good, no, whoa, okay. whoa. We're not going to pay you. Good on you. Good on you. Yeah. yeah. yeah we should, here, I'm go. just we're all gonna I'm give saying you a, We're going to give you a 10 gold per diem, I guess. Yes. Depending okay. on how, how it goes in here. Cool, cool, cool. cool. And, and this can come out of our cut. Yeah. Daryl and I can split it two ways if you guys don't feel comfortable. All right, so what are we doing? I think we go so in with Doug. Doug, our social media manager... And Growth Hacker is coming in with us to help solve these team. puzzles. Street and Team Doug here. He's going to be our street team in that if we get into trouble, he's going to run out into the street and get the mercenaries <laughs> get to come in. get a real team, yeah. Doug, Daryl Wilson, nice to meet you. I put my hand out. Doug. Doug, nice to meet you, buddy. Uh, we're going to give you five up front, and if you do a good job, you're going to get the whole ten, and this is the team. This is who you're working for. Uh, Loving it. I'm, I'm, I'm <laughs> Daryl. Why don't you introduce yourself? Hey, anyway. guys. I, hey, guys. Uh, hey, Doug. I'm Henry. You know, like, I consider myself the fun, laid-back one of the group, so, you know, if you want to, like, you know, just goof around and, you know, maybe tell some jokes, you got some funny jokes, you can tell them about me, and I'll, you know, I'll test them out for you before we try them out on the other tets. I, 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 Henry's I, never talked to an intern before, <laughs> and he's trying to come off relatable, and he's very nervous. <laughs> <laughs> Doug, I take my coffees with two creams, two sugars. <laughs> Good to know. I, Memorized. I hand Doug a, a business card, and then I point to myself, and I'm like, we'll reimburse you for mental gas. <laughs> if you're really working hard on these riddles, we might throw a little cat scratch your way. And that's a trick question, because Egyptians were often buried with their cats. All right, let's go. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so if you... Pay them wait outside. No, I'm coming with you. Oh no, we can't bring Peyton in. Yeah, Peyton, hey. Uh, Who are you going to trust me with? You just said this whole place is dangerous well, and talk, weird. I was going to touch the, do you, do you like that funny speaking kid, that Dutch kid? I mean, he seemed like <laughs> funny speaking <laughs> <laughs> I'm right here. How dare you shake it? <laughs> oh, hey, but what was your name again? Cal, <laughs> Cal, that's My right, Cal. My name was Cal. Sorry, Cal, Cal, I didn't see you there. Hey, uh, me, Peyton, you guys are about the same age, right? So rude No, I'm 25 years old. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> well... <laughs> Oh. Ultimate dad move. <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, what do you, you have any kids? Yes. Oh, how old are they? They are seven and eight. Doing the math? <laughs> okay. It um, was okay. Yeah. It was a little early, <laughs> but <laughs> I loved it very much. I'm still married to my wife. Oh, okay. Um, his name is like Sex Billionaire or whatever. Sex Caliber. <laughs> That's not, it's not once you have kids, you change your name to Sex no, Billionaire. No, I'm just saying that he has a name that implies that he, you know, like, I'm just saying I wouldn't be surprised if a guy named Sex Caliber had kids. My name is Sex Caliber Harash Power. <laughs> Actually, Ben, ben the Cabbage Patch. Matt, you can watch what's your post kid name? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's actually something they don't tell you. Once you have a kid, you change your name. <laughs> you change to a sex My name, name is Matthew Vera. <laughs> hey, check this out, Payton. These aren't a bunch of mercenaries. They could probably teach you to fight, give, give a bunch of oh, good lessons. yeah. Maybe Payton, maybe we can do an intern swap. Yeah. And Payton can, oh, for the course of this adventure, intern with the mercenaries and learn some cool fighting stuff from the mercenaries. Payton, How'd you like that, Payton? Yeah. That sounds pretty, uh, sounds pretty boss, actually. Yeah, it's pretty cool. All right, so. Hey, I whoa, just, whoa, whoa, I d- Payton, did you just hold yourself back from swearing, bro? Oh, God, am I going soft? Yeah, you are, dude. Oh, no. Say whatever the fuck you want. All right. Hey, no, you shouldn't <laughs> encourage the young man to swear. I feel bad enough even when I do that. I've been cussing up a storm. I, you know, I got a whole bunch of money to donate to the swear jar when I get home. Ooh, we should I've been keeping sure. track of every single one. Uh, no, Faden, don't do it. Uh, fr- Faden, uh, don't do it. Fr- Frank. <laughs> okay, on that's, you, pushing it. that's pushing yes, it. That's yes, okay. Yes, Good yes, job. Yes, yes. All right. Uh, ben, Ron, come I back. believe you were going to say something. Oh, I, was my edge. Gonna, I was just going to say that we should make Doug like ultra sweary and then we won't feel so bad about Peyton swearing because it's a whole intern exchange. And fuck, every- fuck, fuck, fuck my butt. Doug, yeah, Doug, 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 Doug. I don't have to like it, but Doug can swear. So Cash Batch, Mr. Cash Batch, it's okay if Peyton stays here with you? Yes, we. this can be some sort of work trading. Train the child. Yeah, sort of an intern swap scenario. I'll live with it. All right. All right, Payton. All right, Payton, get really good at combat. See ya. Yeah, I'll try, I try my best. I mean, I'm already great at combat. What are you fucking doing? Better talking about? at combat. Ah, there's that curse again. Yeah, oh. fucking. <laughs> hey. Keeping track of those. Okay, let's go. Let's go inside <laughs> this you fucking You guys didn't pyramid. see it, but Anthony looked just like sad at himself. Like, uh. <laughs> let's go inside this fucking okay, pyramid. Let's do it. So as you walk into the pyramid, you see- um, oh, We can just walk in. It's not like- Yeah, there's okay. a door. Like, <laughs> okay. it's, just this big, it's just this big archway. There's no like speak, friend, and enter? No. So you, so you basically walk in- I say in, the elven word for friend regardless, <laughs> just as I walk through. The dumbest riddle of all fucking time. 
Nice job, Tolkien. Um, <laughs> is so, it dumber than what's in my pocket? No. <laughs> Second dumbest <laughs> riddle of all time. Okay, Wait, what so, is in your pocket? It's right now nothing. I'm holding all my dice like a maniac. Not that my <laughs> dice would be in a po- my pocket. So. Is it less weird if you're holding all your dice in your pocket? <laughs> um, weird. Just a cool guy walking down the street with my dice in my pocket. I always pocket. have a D20 ready hey to go. Hey, man, in case an orc attacks me, I got to be able to roll for it. I keep my D20 on my right and also my D8 and my D4 in my left pocket. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so as you walk, I got pocket as you walk for my dice. Is that a D four in your pocket, or are you just very poorly endowed? <laughs> okay, so you walk into the pyramid, and you see that like the pyramid is actually really, really oh, fuck. How am I? How to best describe this? Triangular. Okay, so, so, it's, 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 so it's basically it seems to be it seems to be hollow almost in a sense. Like it's not like you think of a pyramid, you think of like well, that's oh, good. So we walk into it. Oh man, it's like the Luxor in it's the Vegas. It's like the man. first thing everyone builds in Minecraft. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, it's like got a really high ceiling and stuff, but it's pretty dark, so you can only see a couple feet in front of you. And as you walk forward, your thighs bump into like a little like a metal these like waist high <laughs> like metal <laughs> gates uh, uh, that don't seem to. But as you walk around them, you see they don't seem to block off anything. They're just individual little lengths of gaze. I'm so scared. I can't. What is happening? I think Freddy figured it out. You can just barely make out as your eyes begin to adjust to the darkness that like going all throughout this pyramid in this weird like circuitous kind of path are a lot of a bunch of these little waist high metal like barricades that don't actually seem to block off anything. Like they, you're like initially when you bump in, you're like, oh, it's a gate that's like preventing oh, God, entrance, it. but it's not. It's just there in the center of this path. Like an amusement park line. <laughs> so we're in a room. There's a bunch of waist high Barriers leading up to something. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> As you follow them, you can see that they're, they're leading to a, a series of like these like like a bunch of seats next to each other and like four like rows of four, like three rows of four that in a tunnel that just descends into darkness almost immediately. You can't see further into the All right. Oh All right, go can, ahead. I can yeah. make so uh, I, as I walk in, I realize. The thing in the front of the, the pyramid, it says, it's, I think it was Revenge of the Mummy, the Ride. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome back. Happy New Year, everyone. Dungeons and Daddies is Matt Arnold as Daryl Wilson. Anthony Birch is our DM. Will Campos is Henry Oak. Beth May is Ron Stampler and myself. Freddie Wong is Glenn Close. Theme song and outro is All Right by Maxton Waller. Thanks this week to Camden Hulk, Dennis Carlson, and Rachel Fenneman for submitting names we used in this episode. Thanks also to Ashton Landau, Chase Johnson, Icarus Del Sol, Jeffrey Tucker, and Joel Agelsoff, who are all Patreon supporters and who all in their own way make this show possible with their support. You too can be as cool as they are at patreon.com slash dungeons and dads, where you can also download the rest of At the Mountains of Dadness, the Call of Cthulhu prequel campaign by becoming a patron at at any level and while you're a patron why not check out all the great extra dad content everything from newsletters written by the dads to behind the scenes discussions that we record immediately after each episode and available only to our patreon supporters the other way you can hear the rest of at the mountains of dadness by the way is heading over to our website dungeonsanddaddies.com where you can do a digital download and peruse our fine enamel pin merch we're going to be doing some more cool dad merch in the next month or so. And by the way, Patreon supporters get first crack at getting their hands on that stuff too. So have yourself a look. We are Dungeons and Daddies on Twitter, bit.ly slash Dungeon Dads for that private Facebook group, and r slash Dungeons and Daddies for that subreddit. Next full episode will be coming out January 21st, which will be our one year anniversary. That's right, we've been here chugging dice for a full lap around the sun. So we'll see you then. There was a time when you could read between the lines You know they never brought you down Never brought you down I have a question that could ruin this podcast. Do you guys laugh a little extra hard? Like for other people, like when they make a joke, like do you sweeten your laughs? I mean, I know you do.